Welcome. So today we are going to be building a shed using Revit 2024, which as of the recording of this video is the most recent version of Revit that has been released. So within Revit, we're going to create a new file for the template. We're going to use Imperial Multidiscipline as opposed to metric. Imperial is going to give us uh, dimensions in feet and inches, which is what we want for this project. So we're going to create a new project, not a project template. So leave it clicked on new project and click OK. It'll take a second to generate all the different elements of this new file. So if this is your first time using Revit, I'll just kind of give you a quick overview of uh, your interface here. So you can open multiple different tabs in this space. The tabs will show up here just like kind of in a web browser. Right now it's going to default to our first level architectural plan. So you can see down in our views uh, toolbar, we've got a bunch of different stuff going on. We want to be working under the architectural views, uh, mainly the floor plans to start. So L1 is going to be your first level. L2 is going to be your second level. We're going to rename these real quick. Uh, we'll name our first level floor since this is our floor level. We'll rename L2 our roof since that's going to represent our roof level. We want to be working in the floor level to start because we're going to put up some walls. Okay, so that's your views toolbar. We've also got our properties toolbar over here. That's just going to show, uh, depending on what we have clicked on, some of the properties of that thing. So once we start constructing walls, if you want to edit like the properties of the wall, that's going to be in this properties toolbar. Okay, and then up at the top, you're going to have your toolbar. It's got a lot of different options. Most of these you can ignore for now. But we're going to be working in the architectural tab. So there's a whole bunch of different tabs. Um, Again, we're going to be mainly sticking to, for this one, the view tab and the architecture tab. So to start, we're going to create the walls of our shed. There's a few different ways that you can create walls. I'll show you all of those different ways for now, um, and then I'll let you kind of decide which way you'd like to do it, depending on what you find to be the easiest. So. To start, I just clicked on a wall over here, and then it's going to bring up this new tab called Modify Slash Place Wall. By default, it's going to have the line tool selected, which is what we want, um, and it's going to have this chain option up here. It's going to be on by default. So we'll just leave it on, and when we have that on, we'll click to begin placing our wall. Then you, you can move your mouse wherever you want. We're just going to make a nice, simple rectangle. We don't want it to be nearly this big. That's like 60 feet. We just want, we'll get it in the ballpark. And we'll click to place uh, the other end of the wall. Notice, since we have chain on, it's going to automatically start creating the next wall. So once I click to finish the first one, it's going to automatically start creating the second wall. So I'll click again. And then I will start moving my mouse to place the end of our third wall. What I want you to notice is as I'm sort of moving my mouse, there's a couple things sort of happening. Mainly, uh, what I want you to notice here is as I move it even with the other wall, this nice dotted line shows up. So that dotted line is going to indicate that we are now even. Uh, straight up and down vertically with that first wall that we placed with the edge. So since we want it to be even, we're going to click to place it there, and then we'll just connect uh, our fourth wall to the uh, start of our first wall. Um, when you're trying to place a wall, it'll try to Revit will try to snap to certain points with this little pink box. So for this one, it doesn't matter where we click it. It's just going to join up like a full wall anyways. 
Um, since we have chain on, it's going to try to create like a fifth wall. We don't want that, so I'm just going to hit escape twice, and then it's going to be done. So that's the first way you can create walls. Not too bad. Let's say you want to place walls one by one. You don't want to chain them together. You want to have the freedom to kind of place them as you please. So you're, then you're just going to turn off the chain option. And now when we place a wall, we'll click to start, and then we'll move our mouse where we want it, and we'll just click the second one. And now notice I'm not creating a second wall. It doesn't automatically do it this time because the chain option is off. Sometimes you want this because you don't want to just be creating a ton of walls. You just want to create one wall and that's it. Or you want to create a wall that's like coming out of the middle of another wall or something. Okay. We don't want that here, but if you did, that's how you would or why you would use this option. We're just going to create another wall from the endpoint of the first one. We'll go down and place the second endpoint. Then we'll do a third wall, clicking there. Again, we want it to be even with the edge of our first wall. So we'll click once we see that dotted line. Then we're gonna connect those two and we're good to go. Hit escape to exit that uh, wall command. And then there's one more way we can create walls for our shed. Again, we're gonna go to architecture wall. And instead of using the line command, since we're just making a simple shape like a rectangle, we can actually click that rectangle option. Now we're just gonna click once, click again, where we want the second corner to be, or where we want the opposite corner to be, I guess, and then our walls are done. Okay, so, so far so good. Next, we're gonna dimension the walls of our shed. So we want it to be a 12 by 16 foot footprint. Um, right now you can't even tell how big it is. So what we're going to do to dimension this, we're going to click on the walls. So as we click on the walls, you'll see these dimensions start to pop up. Now, one thing that's super unintuitive, or to me doesn't make a lot of sense in Revit, is when you want to dimension, like, let's say, this bottom wall, you don't click on the bottom wall. Because when I click on the bottom wall, it wants me to dimension the left side of our shed. So you kind of have to click the one that's perpendicular or adjacent to uh, the wall you want to dimension. So if I click on the left side, it wants me to dimension the top. If I click on the right, now I can actually dimension the bottom. So I want this longer side to be 16 feet. Now, if I just type in 16 feet, it should update to be 16 feet. But I want you to notice these extension lines. The extension lines are actually lined up with the interior wall of the shed. We want the exterior walls from end to end to be 16 feet. So in order to get this extension line to be lined up with the outside edge of our shed, we just click these little blue dots. I think they're called grips. So when we click the grips, it's going to update our dimension to account for the thickness of the wall. And now it's gonna be 17.4, which is too big. We wanna update that again, 16 feet. Okay, now we're happy. That one's good. We wanna now dimension the left or the right side. So to do that, we're going to click on either the top or the bottom. We're gonna update our grips again by clicking those little blue dots. And then this one we're gonna make 12 feet. Notice I don't have to type in anything else besides 12. I don't have to do the little foot uh, apostrophe uh, to represent feet. I don't have to do zero inches or anything like that. I can just do 12 and hit enter, and it will automatically assume I'm typing it in feet. Um, if I did have like some amount of inches as part of my dimension, you can just do 12 space. Let's say it was 12 foot six. You can do 12 space six and it will automatically update that to be 12 foot six. So it's kind of nice, it lets you be a little bit lazy. We want 12 feet, so I'll update it to be that. This can be a little bit annoying that those dimensions go away. If you want those to show all the time, you just need to click this little dimension line. 
So that's going to lock it in. Now if I click away, we have this dimension showing all the time, which is what we want here. We want to be able to quickly notice or reference how big our shed is. Okay, so we have our walls all built. Let's go try to look at them a little bit. So you can't really tell that they're there necessarily or, or how tall they are or anything looking at the floor plan. It's just a top-down view. So if we want to look at it from a 3D view, we go to the View tab. So we were in Architecture. We're going to go over to View. And we're going to click the little house symbol here for the 3D view. And that's going to create a 3D view for us that we can find under Architectural Coordination 3D View. So the one we just created is now this little 3D in brackets. So if you zoom in, now you can see, yep, we've got our four walls. Our shed looks super tall. And if we click on one of these walls, you can see, yep, it's 20 feet tall. So way too tall, but we can fix that and we will in a minute. But for now, let's go back to our floor plan and we're going to create a floor for our shed. So to do that, we need to go back to the architecture tab and then we'll click on floor, which is right over here. Make sure you're on the floor plan, not the roof plan. We don't want our floor to be on the top of our walls. We want it to be right at the base level. So click on floor. And now it should open up a new tab called modify or create floor boundary. So we're gonna select the boundary lines of our floor. So the boundary of our floor is just gonna be the outside of our shed. You'll notice as I click on these walls, they kind of highlight in pink or purple, maybe fuchsia if you're being uh, picky. So what you want is those fuchsia lines to be on the outside exterior edge of your shed. If yours are showing on the interior like of the walls, you're going to need to click this little flip uh, symbol. So if I do that, now it's going to switch it to be on the inside of the walls. We want it to be on the exterior of the walls. Otherwise, our floor is not going to go all the way out to the edges of our shed. So once you've got that all set, then we are just about ready to finish this up, which we'll do by clicking the green check, but don't click it just yet. We're going to switch our floor from a generic 12-inch floor to a nice, fancy, uh, an inch wood joist with a wood finish. So for some reason, my menus are kind of acting up when I have this recording software going. So I'm going to pause the video, select that wood joist, 10 inch wood finish option. And I'll join you back in a second. Okay. So as you can see now, I have selected my floor wood joist, 10 inch wood finish option from the drop down. So that's what our floor will be once we finish it. And let's click the little green check mark to complete that. So once we've completed placing our floor, we're gonna pause for right now. I'll pick it up in another video. So thanks. See you in the next one.